Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve a lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. It is exciting to be here with you all today. Um, you know, so much changes every single day in the world for everybody, including myself. And today is a very special day. It is the 100th episode of It's All About the Questions. I guess that means I'm good for syndication now, Mr. B, right? After uh, 100 episodes that you qualify for syndication. So it's very, very exciting. And I'm excited to have um, an extra special guest, even you know, you know, I love all of my guests on the show, but this person was referred to me by somebody that I respect so much. He's not only a dear mentor, but he's a special friend. And he said, hey, you need to interview um, Lolly Daskal. And I was like, okay, whatever you suggest, I'm going to do. I got an advanced copy of her book. Um, as you know, I read the entire book of everybody that's going to be on my show. So I always try to schedule in advance so I have some time to read it. And I was recovering from my surgery on my hand. I finished reading this book. It is powerful. This book it should be the top five books on everybody's bookshelf if you are a leader, if you have a business, or you want to just be a better human being on the planet. So please welcome um, my guest today, Lolly Daskal. She is one of the most sought-after executive leadership coaches in the world. But beyond that, she has a message that everybody needs to hear. So Lolly, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to be here and honored to be here. You know, it, we planned this so many months ago um, and you know I've done lots of research on you as I do with with all of my guests and the one thing that really stuck out for me was how much we both like to ask questions <laughs> as a coach that's what I do I'm the, you have to be very gifted at asking questions and there's a, a quote in your book that really stood out I mean, I, it's completely dog-eared. It's got circles and lines all over the place because it was just so powerful as reading it. But you said, within each of us are two competing sides, a polarity of character, but only one leads to greatness. I love that line. And I was wondering if you could expand upon what you mean by two competing sides and a polarity of character. Absolutely. So within each of us, we have strengths and we have weaknesses. We have things that we like about ourselves, things that we don't like about ourselves, things that are perfect and things that are imperfect. And most of the time, all of us want to spend the time on our strengths. We want to spend on the things that are good for us. And what we don't realize is that even though we have this polarity, in order to be a human being, a whole human being, in order to do the things we are meant to do in the world, that means doing something impactful and doing something significant and making a difference, we have to embody and embrace both of these parts in order to unleash our greatness. So how does somebody go about understanding those two parts? There was another line that I love from your book. We are not just what we think we are, what we hide. Um, it's not something that most people think about with that whole competing sides that, that they're hiding something because people don't realize that they're hiding something. So in order to answer that, I want to talk about one of the archetypes, because what it will do will illustrate two parts to that question. It will talk to us, how do we recognize our gaps? How do we see which part is a greatness and which part is a gap? And then we can talk about how we hide. And so if that's okay with you, I would like to do that. That would be great. Let me just mention the title of your book. It's The Leadership Gap, What Gets Between You and Your Greatness, and this is sure to be a New York Times bestseller. I know it's just releasing now. Yes, it's now available for pre-sale, and they get amazing bonuses. But let's talk about this archetype. Let's And first of all, it's called the Rethink System. It's called Rethink because it stands for the seven archetypes, and the first archetype I want to talk about starts with an R. The rebel, oh, excuse me, the first archetype is an R that is the rebel. The rebel is someone that wants to do something 
really impactful in the world. It's almost like a rebel with a cause, right? They want to start a business. They want to start a movement. They want to create a product that nobody has. They want to do something in a very passionate way. But in order to make that happen, they have to have confidence. You have to have confidence in order to do that significant thing, in order to make a difference, in order to make an impact. But for every single one of us who has confidence, there is a gap. There is something within us that there is a polarity. And the polarity is is that sometimes we feel like an imposter who has self-doubt. And being the imposter and having self-doubt sounds like, I'm not capable, I'm not worthy, I'm not smart enough, look at them, they're, look what they're doing, I can't do that. And when we have this polarity within us, what happens is, is that it can cost us in our greatness. And so that's how we can recognize one will lead us to greatness and one will lead us to our gaps. Now, there's seven archetypes in your book. And, you know, you rethink, as you said, rebel. You wouldn't think that somebody who identifies themselves and has demonstrated themselves as a leadership type of a rebel would suffer from imposter syndrome. I'm How so did you that realize that? I'm happy you're bringing this up. I'm really happy that you're asking this question because in my research, I have found that 99.1% of high achieving individuals suffer from the imposter syndrome. Which, which means that they don't really believe they deserve to be there, or is it more to it than that? So at some point in their career, they have self-doubt. At some point in their career, they think, I'm not smart enough to make this happen. At some point, they're standing in front of a board or you know, leading a team or creating a company, and they say, I can't believe I'm doing this. Can I really make this happen? Do I, can I really pull this off? Do, are they really going to listen to me? How many times? I know I say this. I know the people that I coach around the world say this, and I've recognized it in every individual, and I've coached thousands and thousands of individuals. They are very confident rebels out there, but they all suffer from the imposter syndrome. How do you get past something like that? So that's another great question. So how does someone who wants to make an impact in the world and who suffers from the imposter syndrome, how do we deal with this gap? How do we deal with this polarity? So the first thing is, is to, and this is very important, is to stop comparing yourself to others. Because the imposter syndrome feeds on comparison. If you're always looking over your shoulder and saying, oh, look what they're doing, look what she's doing, look what he's doing, you could never, ever catch up. I write in my book, there's always going to be somebody smarter, better, faster, leaner, prettier, and wiser than you are. And so if if we're always comparing ourselves to others, then guess what? We will feel like an imposter. We will have self-doubt. But so then how do you, how do you do, how do you leverage this? How do you leverage the imposter? So I think it's very, very important to even the messages in our mind. If every single day we're always talking about what we're not, why not we fill our arsenal with what we are? And what I like to do is I have a practice is at the end of the evening, I like to say, Lolly, what did you do great today? What did you do that was well, that was fantastic? How did you make an impact? How did you make a difference? How did you serve someone that it really touched them? And by meditating on this, I, you know, I almost like fill my arsenal with things that I'm really good at. So every time something comes up in my mind says, oh, you're not really worthy of doing this, something in my mind says, oh, yeah, you know, yesterday I did that, that made a real impact. Two weeks ago, I did that, that made a real difference. And so we almost have the polarity of the negative and the positive in our mind. And so when it becomes negative, we can bring something positive up. So based on the phrasing you you just used, I'm thinking that you yourself have personally identified that you have at times had the imposter syndrome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You have to think about it. I'm a woman coaching at a very high level in business. That's not something that usually happens. If I'm in a boardroom, sometimes I am the only woman sitting in there. 
and sitting in the seat. And then sometimes I have something to say. And sometimes I will say, are they going to listen to me? Why should they be listening to me? And then I have to say, why not? <laughs> you know, you've been around the block. You've done the work. You have three decades of, um, you know, consulting and coaching experience. You can say what you need to say. Sometimes it does happen. Well, considering you're considered one of the top 10 leadership thinkers in the world, it actually makes me feel good to know that you have those thoughts, too. So as we go into the first commercial break, I think that's that's just something for all of us to think about, that people that we think have no moments of doubt do. And your your book really explains that and how you can get out of that as well. So I think that is is totally wonderful. As we go into our first commercial break, we have Lolly Daskal, author of The Leadership Gap, What Gets Between You and Your Greatness, soon to be a New York Times best-selling book. Um, the forward's by Marshall Goldsmith, which is uh, just amazing. So please stay tuned. We will be right back. Success comes from not only what you know, but also who you know. Welcome back to It's All About the Questions with award-winning author Laura Stewart. Lolly, before the commercial break, we were talking about this whole idea of we all think that people in higher positions than we're at um, do have these doubts, these thoughts. You have seven archetypes. We talked about rebel versus imposter. Um, there are several others, explorer, truth teller, hero, inventor, navigator, knight. When I was reading through the book, I saw myself at different points in different aspects of my career feeling like there were several that I was embodying along with way more shadow traits than I'd probably like to admit. Do people shift in and out of these different leadership roles and gaps? I'm so happy you asked that question because I think a lot of people are going to be thinking the same thing. You see, we have been conditioned by some of the best practices out there um, that will teach us we're only one thing. We have Strength Finder, we have Myers-Briggs that say, you know, you are this. And what is different about this book is that these seven archetypes are situational. That means at any given moment, we can ask ourselves, which archetype do I need to be in order to stand in my greatness and not to lead from my gaps? So if you, me- if you memorize the rethink system, you could ask yourself, do I need to be a truth teller right now? Or will I maybe come across as a deceiver? Do I need to be a navigator? Or maybe I will come across as a fixer. So in any situation, you have a choice. What if somebody has a stronger, use the word strength, in an area than an other, and they they feel, oh, I'm I can only stay here. Like I can, and everybody, the, there's lots of resources up with with Lolly's website and within this book, which everybody should get. Um, Can you just stay in one, or does that end up hampering your ability to lead? So it's a great question, again, because it does really work that way. Let's, Let's talk it through so we can understand it. Let's say you're in a meeting, and you're talking to your team, right? The leader needs to be confident. They can't lead from the imposter and have self-doubt. They need to know what they need to talk about, but they need to talk about it with confidence. But then the leader needs to be able to set direction in a way that hasn't been done before, in a way that maybe takes people into uncharted waters. So what they need to do is they need to be the explorer who fuels their intuition because if you don't fuel your intuition, as we talk about in the book, you might be exploiting your team and manipulating into doing things that you want. You might want to control them. And so as you can tell, the leader then needs to be a truth teller. They need to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth because then your team will think that you're withholding information and you'll become suspicious. But then maybe the leader needs to tell them some really bad news, so he needs to be the hero and be courageous. Otherwise, he'll come across as a bystander who's filled with fear. If you don't tell your team exactly how things are, then your team is not going to understand what needs to get done. So you can't be the gap and be the bystander. 
And this is how it works. You can work through all seven archetypes, and in one meeting, you need to be able to pivot and cultivate and embody all of these seven archetypes. I don't want to go through all of them right now because we're going to be missing out the wealth of information that comes with each one of them, but that's how this system works. We can. We need to be all seven at all times. Um, do we lean in maybe to being very confident? But how are you confident? Where are you confident? Why are you confident? That has to do with the other archetypes. When you were doing your the executive coaching that you did, I mean, you've done this in 14 countries, six languages, hundreds upon hundreds of companies. You have your own company lead from within. What Was there a moment when you realized there that you were dealing with, say, seven similar traits, archetypes in people. Was there any one moment or all of a sudden it just was, all right, these are what I'm seeing? So one of the things that I want to backtrack a little bit is that I'm a a Jungian. I've studied everything from Jung, and he's taught me that within us there is a polarity, you know, that we have the dark and we have the light. And as Jung calls them, he calls them shadows. So one of the things that I brought to coaching that is different than other coaches out there is that I was looking for the parts that were great within my clients, but the parts that that maybe they were hiding or parts that were causing shadows within them and causing them to have gaps. So as much as I was coaching, I was also listening really listening to the parts that they were struggling with. And then I found something really, really amazing, that it didn't matter what country, it didn't matter what gender, it didn't matter, you know, what their position was or at what level they were. Within each person that I was coaching and in conversations I was having at conferences, these seven archetypes existed within everyone. Did I name them and articulate them in a way that, maybe wasn't as clear when I had those aha moments, maybe. But once I started to take notes and once I started to do research and once I started to create a harmony between each one of my coaching clients, I saw that every single person had this within them. Okay, so, you know, there's like my wheel, the wheels of my brain are spinning like crazy here. Was there one archetype that you saw first? It doesn't work that way. Okay. No, because it can, I, I saw one of my clients is a truth teller. The, the book opens up with a, a very um, hard-telling story about a leader that's a truth teller and what he carried with him his whole life about being a truth teller and what that ended up costing him because he was carrying baggage about being a truth teller. And I think every person should read that book because there's a parts of that story within all of us that we carry with us, within us baggage that we think we're hiding and no one sees, but it ends up costing us in our relationships and our partnership and our leadership. Can you recover? Well, I don't want to say can you. How do you recover from living in that shadow to shifting perceptions of what your actual leadership trait is? As in the story, um, I think I named him Michael just to protect his, um, you know, identity. Um, The story about Michael being the truth teller, I told him that he had to be vulnerable in in order to be strong. And that meant was that he would have to admit to his team what he was struggling with. He would have to come clean. He would have to say, I struggle from, I did this. And in order to unpack his baggage, in order to be the authentic person he really is, and when I said to him, this is how you stand in your greatness. I I love that. And something we talk about a lot on this show is asking yourself the right questions. And then when you get to that moment of truth, being willing to share that, to be vulnerable. As all of my listeners know, Lolly, um, I have epiphanies on the show. (laughs) all the time when I listen to my guests and I interview them and it's like okay yeah I've lived that I've breathed that I get it Um, I've cried on my show because of what somebody has said to me so that is important for people to get um, that it's okay to be vulnerable absolutely 
So as, as an executive coach, as somebody who's written this great book, The Leadership Gap, What Gets Between You and Your Greatness, um, is there a suggestion for how people can begin to be vulnerable? I mean, it's not just a blurt it out, right? It's, it's having a conversation and understanding, and I know they have you as their coach in those situations, but what if somebody doesn't and we have a minute till we go to news? So maybe yeah. we maybe we need to tease everybody that we'll do that <laughs> after the news break. <laughs> what questions <laughs> should people be thinking about as we go into the news break um, to prep them for our conversation after? Is there one thing you'd like everybody to think about? So I'm thinking about that because it's a great question that you're asking me. So the first thing that I would ask people to think about is what are they trying to hide from others? I love that. So what are you trying to hide from others? You said the first question, is there another one? And then after you've answered, what are you trying to hide from others? Do you really think that no one sees it? Oh, I love that. So what are you trying to hide from others? And do you think nobody really sees it? We'll be right back with more from Lolly Daskal. Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. So before the news break, Lolly posed to everybody, what are you hiding? And do you think no one sees it? And I just love that. And if you were listening on the podcast, hopefully you paused and actually took some time to think about that. If you were driving your car, hopefully you just thought about it in your head and still were paying attention and didn't cause any accidents while those words were sinking into you. Um, Lolly, you know, to me, those questions were so powerful because we tend to think that we can hide it from the rest of the world, our insecurities, but it does come out in so many different ways. And and there's one archetype that for me really resonated of, I didn't realize I was something I was hiding, right, was the navigator and the shadow trait of that, a fixer. I try to fix things because of several losses that happened in my life when my brother died that I wasn't there when he died. I mean, I was at a friend's house because I was 10 years old, but I wanted to fix it and I couldn't fix it. So I try to fix things and that often interferes. Um, Is that sort of the example of of what you were talking around about the hiding and thinking no one sees it? Absolutely. So let's talk about that archetype so people can understand how it works because it's, it's good to t- uh, throw out names about archetypes, but we want to understand what it really means so people can resonate with it. Right, and people so, think fixer's a good thing, right? That they're the right. person that goes in and, and just clears the decks, gets everything resolved and going forward, but it's a little different in the way you're talking about it with Navigator. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about this archetype because it's, I think all of us suffer from this. Anybody that considers themselves smart suffers from this gap of this archetype. So in order to stand in our greatness, we have to learn to be a navigator. A navigator is a very smart individual that people come to when they have problems, when they have challenges, when they need something to be fixed, and they come to a navigator and they say, oh, I have this problem. All great leaders are always having people come at them and say, can you help me, can you help me, can you help me? But a navigator has to have two very important traits. They have to know how to listen, and they have to know how to ask open-ended questions. Because when you're a navigator, even though you know where you need people to go, when you ask them open-ended questions and when you listen to them, you empower people. But for every navigator that's out there, there is a gap. And the shadow part of the navigator is the fixer who comes across as arrogant. And the fixer sounds like this. You have a problem? Oh, yeah, I've had that problem before. Do this, do that, do it now. And why didn't you do it that way yesterday? I know how to solve that problem. You just need to listen to me. Most people, when they come to you with a problem, they basically just want you to listen. When you jump in, 
and you want to fix it, you're just coming across arrogant and you're disempowering people. So the navigator empowers people. The fixer disempowers. The navigator is about our greatness and the fixer is about our gaps. Which one do you choose to lead with? That's a question we can ask ourselves. It sounds like there's a, a fine line, but a big line. It, and I know that that sounds kind of crazy, but it's easy for a navigator to shift into fixer, yet at the same time, the difference in the two is dramatic. So there is a way to tell which you need to be. So if someone comes to you and says, I'm suffering from a problem or I have a problem, the first question you need to do after you've listened is, do you want my help? Most of the time they're going to say, no, I just really want you to listen. And then you need to listen. It's almost like you have to draw a line in the sand. The need to be a fixer comes from wanting to be validated, appreciated, and recognized. And so we jump in. We don't even ask if people want help. We just give them help. So we have to ask. We have to ask that wonderful question, do you want my help or do you want me to listen? And then if they say they just want you to listen, you just really have to hold yourself back in. Absolutely. You just have to listen and listen to understand, not listen to just listen. Listen to really see what you, and then you could always ask along the way. I hear that you feel this way. I understand this is what's going on. Is there anything I could help you with? No, no, no. I just need to tell you what's on my mind. Okay, I hear you want to tell me something that's on your mind. At any time, if you want any advice, you could always ask. But for right now, I will be listening. Now, what if in your organization or in your personal life, because these roles are in not just businesses, but in personal lives too, what if you have several people at the top, so say um, CEO, COO, CFO, whatever, and in your personal life, maybe a husband and wife or um, partners, life partners or family members, doesn't matter, that are the same types rebel and explorer or truth both of them are truth tellers whatever it may be does that cause problems and if so how do you resolve that it doesn't cause a problem at all because if if you're leading on the side of your greatness all of a sudden those relationships feel like they're in a flow If you're leading from the sides of your gaps of being the fixer or maybe feeling like an imposter, those kinds of relationships are very stressful and ends up being very challenging. So that's, again, another way that you can ask yourself, am I going to lead from my greatness or my gaps? Am I leading from my shadows that are causing me to have challenges in my relationships? We want people a whole bunch of truth tellers. We want a whole bunch of rebels. We want a whole bunch of navigators because that's when we create things. That's when we do something significant. That's how we make a difference. As we know, we need a group of people, like-minded people, to do something impactful. How does somebody determine? Because, you know, like I read through the book, um, The Leadership Gap, What Gets Between You and Your Greatness, I noticed at the back it said there were assessments that were available. Um, So how does somebody determine where they fall more frequently than another? Is that part of the assessment process that you've developed? The assessment is more detailed than the book. It will tell you which one you tend to lean into. And it also talks about the language that comes with each one of the archetypes. So let's take, for instance, the rebel is always saying, how can I push the envelope, right? What can I do to make a difference? While the navigator always is saying, how can we get to where we need to go without answering the question, without fixing the problem? So there's a language that's associated with every single archetype that will help you tune in to someone when they say something in language, you'll say, oh, they're a rebel. Oh, they're a navigator. They're a truth teller. So understanding that language helps you know perhaps which way to respond or whether you yourself are switching into the shadow trait versus the leadership archetype, it sounds like. Absolutely. Absolutely. You said it brilliantly. Thank you. 
All right. Now, in the book, there's one story that um, really hit me, which was, um, I don't remember her name. It was uh, a French woman who was taking over as CEO of a company, and the old um, CEO was still there in the transition time. And what stood out for me in that story was sometimes there's nothing you can do to shift somebody and you just have to let it go. Is that sometimes the case that you just can't shift yourself out of an archetype or a situation? So the best thing to do is just say the best way to move forward is to separate from a situation. With so let's talk about the, yeah, let's talk about that story to give it some context. Right. Uh, so, so Francesca moves her family across the pond, thousands and thousands of miles away. Francesca has five children, and she is now the new CEO of a company. And in the transition period from the old CEO, she needs to work with the old CEO to, in order to create this company to be successful. Part of the due diligence, I remember we sat there and Lynn said that he would participate and really help the new CEO in order to before he left, help everybody and talk about all the processes and the practices and the clients and the customers. They were going to be partners, co-CEOs, in order to have this transition go very successful. While we were going through the due diligence, everybody was very happy, and Francesca was excited about this new prospect, and she moved her family and her husband and everybody to this new country. And then when she gets there, Right after the sign, you know, the signatures are signed on the deal and Lynn gets lots and lots of money, all things start to fall apart. All of a sudden, Lynn is excluding Francesca. Lynn is making fun of Francesca, disrespecting her in meetings and just avoiding her and isolating her. And Francesca is really upset. And she calls me up and says, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, go find out what's going on. Call a meeting with him. He says, okay, I'll have a meeting with you. But then he cancels the meeting. And then she says, I don't know what to do. He's ignoring me. And I say, okay, invite him and his family and his, his wife over to dinner to meet your family and your husband. And so they all get together and everything seems to be really great. And then they go back to work and everything is great for one week. But then everything falls apart again. It just seems Lynn does not want to participate in co, um, you know, leadership and doesn't want to help her in the process and, and definitely doesn't want to be part of the transition. And so what we see is Lynn is calling in all of his top people and is talking them behind her back. And at this point, I said to Francesca, enough is enough. We have talked to him. We have invited him. We have tried to communicate. We tried to listen. We've done everything. But now it's not working. So I said, you know what? He's got to go. And the people that um, are disloyal to you have to go because loyalty for me is either black or white. Either you're loyal or you're disloyal. You can't have something in between. Okay, and that's and we perfect. Have- We're going to go into the commercial last commercial break with that. I want you to think about that, everybody. Are you loyal or are you disloyal? Who in your life might be? And that's a tease because there's a lot more to it than that. We'll be right back. Success comes from not only what you know, but also who you know. Welcome back to It's All About the Questions with award-winning author Laura Stewart. All right, so Lolly, we were talking about that story with Francesca and Lynn and um, loyalty and disloyalty being black and white. Which archetype and shadow was Lynn in versus Francesca? So that's a great question because Francesca is about being a knight. A knight is all about serving people, protecting people, being loyal to people. And what we found was that Lynn was being a mercenary. A mercenary is all about serving self. And a mercenary always says, what have you done for me lately? While a knight says, what can I do for you lately? And it was... Francesca, who was really leaning out, leaning in to Lynn, what can I do? How can I serve you? Let me get to know you. I want to protect you. I want to be loyal to you. 
but it was Lynn that was being the mercenary that was leaning out and saying, no, this is about me. It's all about me. You need to serve me. My people need to be with me. And that's what was causing one to lead in their greatness and one to lead from their gap. Which is a shame because Lynn was, at at most of his career, probably he was a knight. And now being the mercenary, what triggers such a shift from that in the, in the situation like that? So for me, I really, I always go to the driver. I always go to the triggers. I had to ask myself, what was going on in Lynn's life that was causing him to be self-serving instead of serving others? And this is true for every time someone goes to the shadow, goes to the gap that there's something very stressful that they're suffering from that they're not looking at. And when you don't have a chance to look at it, when you don't pay attention to it, when you're not aware of it, when you don't identify it, you tend to act out in a way that you normally wouldn't act out. For 30 years, Lynn was a knight. But when somebody was going to take away his baby, even though he got billions of dollars, he didn't like the idea of giving away what he had given birth to, and he was acting out. Remember we talked about, Are you? Uh, do you know what you're hiding? He was hiding the parts that he was really unhappy about letting go of something that he was very proud of. And he was acting out in a way that was punishing Francesca. And he didn't realize it. I, I met with him six months after he was fired and let go. And I said, do you realize how you came across? And he goes, I had no intention, but it was hard for me to let go. And I had to put a stake in the ground and act like it was still mine when I knew I had to let go. For my listeners out there, how would you recommend a piece of advice, a question they can ask themselves to help them step back from whatever situation they're in right now, whether it's a good one or a not so good one, to help them look at whether they're being in a shadow trait or in the main archetype, so being a knight or a mercenary or or whatever the other ones are. Can you give us um, some advice? So this is a very interesting topic, and I don't know if we have a lot of time for this, but when we are leading from our greatness on all our senses, emotionally, physically, spiritually, there's a certain way we feel. We feel we're in a flow. We feel we're on top of our game. We feel like invincible. We can do anything. When we're leading from our gaps, we tend to have stomach aches, headaches. We feel anxious. Things don't make sense. We feel stuck. We feel bewildered. We're wondering why things aren't connecting for us. When those things start to take place, when you start to have these symptoms, the question is to ask yourself, what parts of my gaps am I leading from? Because your greatness always makes you feel good, but your gaps make you un- feel, I'm not, I'm not well, something is off, something is wrong. So that's an instant tell in order to, to ask yourself, do I feel good? Do I feel unhealthy? Do I feel, you know, that am I in my flow? Am I out of my flow? Those are kind of questions you can ask yourself. You have um, another quote in your book I call these quotes because you wrote them and I love them if you get the wrong answer to the right question you usually have a chance to fix it but if you get the right answer to the wrong question you're sunk (laughs) I love that because I'm my my phrase that I tell people is the right questions can change your life and it's not about the answers it's about the questions why absolutely why that statement why I know why I feel it's so important to ask the right question. But as we are starting to close today, why do you feel the questions matter? I think questions, somebody, you know, as a coach, I always ask questions. And what I find is, is that people feel empowered by questions and they come to answers that they know deep inside need to be the answers. When you don't have a good question, you can't find the answer within. And I I recently said, I was on another podcast, and they said, what is it like for you to be someone to be answering questions all of a sudden? I said, you know, it was an interesting experience because being able to answer a question means I'm tapping into the wisdom that I have 
and then I'm revealing it in a form of knowledge. And it's very empowering. I love that. Uh, totally a tweet out. If you don't have the right question, you can't find the answer within. I love that. Um, share how people can find out more about you and where they can get your soon-to-be New York Times bestselling book, The Leadership Gap, What Gets Between You and Your Greatness. Thank you for that endorsement. They can find it at theleadershipgapbook.com. Hurry today because I have some really great bonuses and gifts that you can get if you pre-order the book. And you can get the assessment, which most people have to usually pay $97 for. So theleadershipgapbook.com. I, I love that. Um, and Lolly, you are considered one of the top leadership thought um one of the top leadership thought leaders in, in the world, and you don't get there overnight. Your journey has been a long journey. For those of my listeners who perhaps are just starting out or are comparing themselves to others, what, can, what would you like to say to them to help them move forward in their journeys? So there are two things I would like to say. The first thing is when I first started out, the only thing I had in mind was to be perfect. I wanted perfection. I wanted to be, you know, <laughs> I, I, I laugh about it because I didn't realize it then, but there's no such thing as perfect. So I caused myself a lot of stress. What I found was that instead of pursuing perfect, I should pursue excellence. And that little pivot was a game changer for me because pursuing excellence means that I have to show up in the best of what I have to offer and that I can do. Showing up and trying to be perfect, that I can't do. So that was a game changer for me. And the second thing that I really want to share with everyone is, is that I know this for a fact, that greatness lies within everyone. It's a destiny that's available to everyone, but we just have to choose it. And I hope that everyone listening today chooses it right now to stand in their greatness. And one thing I know for sure, in order to stand in your greatness, everybody needs to read your book because I did not realize the, that Fixer was not the navigator. I didn't have the terms for it, but I didn't realize it till I read the book. So you've given me major ahas that have already begun to shift my life in so many ways. And I want that for all of my listeners. So thank you for standing in your greatness and writing this book, because it's not a small thing to write and publish a book. Thank you so much. This was a great conversation. And one thing is, I've done a lot of podcasts, but you ask great questions. So thank you for that. Oh, it's my joy. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored um, for that. And I, I believe in this book so much, I'm actually going to give away a copy of your book to one of my listeners who tweets out to me at, at the Laura Stewart or emails me, because some people aren't on Twitter, laura at laurasteward.com, and tells me what one new question you're asking yourself now because of today's show. All right, so if you're listening to this on the podcast, still send it to me anyway, because you never know what I may give you anyway. But uh, Lolly, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. It was a privilege, and it was an honor. And I know you're sitting in a hotel room somewhere, because you're <laughs> doing some work today. So I appreciate that. And um, everyone, have a... a fantastic day ask yourself what are you hiding today and do you think no one sees it because standing in your truth standing in your greatness but most of all standing inside the truth inside yourself you know you're not in alignment somewhere everybody is at some point in their life you can choose today how you want to live the rest of your life today the right questions can change your life everyone so what are you asking today have a great day everyone You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. Connect with Laura at itsallaboutthequestions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today. 